Sunday, November 6th. It's kind of chilly in the Sable d'Olonne. A thin layer of frost covers the pontoon, this famous pontoon about 900 feet long, at the end of which every four years a door opens onto the open sea, onto adventure, and much more. For now, all is calm, even if not for long. The start of a Vendée Globe resembles a symphony in three movements. Upon the opening, one senses the main theme to be emotion. The regulars may well display a fake smile. It certainly doesn't reflect their inner feelings on that particular day on the pontoon of the most mythical open sea race there is. It's the third time, and it's still as emotional. In the end, that's why this isn't a race like any other. What is there to say about the new kids caught unaware, even if warned, by this emotional overflow? With his Corto Maltese look, Alan Rura, 23, is the youngest competitor ever in the history of the Vendée Globe. I think this is the best day of my life. No words can explain it. It's a dream come true, a challenge to oneself. I feel a great pride being here today and see this crowd on the pontoon. I'm very, very honored to be here. Embraces, kisses, appointments are set for in two and a half, three months' time. Then you're reminded not to hang about, otherwise upsetting a very precise schedule. So then, anchors are raised just before interpreting a grand suite. And for already having been through it, some know the score better. It's a special, special moment, special day, and I look forward to this canal. It's a, it's a unique experience. Come as neighbors, some from afar, 350,000 are announced. Figures that make your head spin, but for most earthlings, it's a cheap onboarding called the imaginary, which can take them very far. The level of motion while going up the channel? It's a child's dream, this Vendée Globe. It's going to be strong. It's already intense. It's an emotion that remains intact because it's something so very special to take off for long months at sea and leave everyone behind. What's going through Kojiro Shiraishi's mind, dressed as a samurai, a warrior, as he sails down the channel? One sure thing, the first Asian competitor in the Vendée Globe couldn't be expecting such elation. Morgan Lagravière, overwhelmed by emotion, Will he be ready to pick up the challenge of her first world around? Armel Lecléache, heavy favorite, does he feel any pressure? We'd love to know what runs through their mind during the most amazing procession sailing competition has to offer. When the channel moves away of the wake, the score is played at another tempo. It picks up speed. Time to shift to racing mode. Maneuver towards the open sea, the start line. Wait until the last moment to disembark the team members. And place yourself so as to be best positioned at 1.02 p.m. And when Prince Albert de Monaco signals the start of the 8th Vendée Globe, we can easily imagine there's a strong feeling of relief for the 29 competitors. I love open sea and now I'm all for good. Going really far, so I'm very, very happy. It's crazy. Wow, what a day. Holy cow. I had been told about going up the channel. I still have a lump in my throat. Yeah, still have a huge lump in my throat. It was so intense. Thomas Ruyon still under emotional stress, while Romain Athanasio sets a few facts straight. All right, see you in three months? Three months? Three months. Holy cow. The 8th Vendée Globe is launched, and well launched, except for Dida Costa. Boat at a stop less than one hour into the race, a ballast hose that disconnects, water that spills and damages the electric system. 
no other solution than to go back to port. I came in and saw there was water all inside the boat. So I decided to disconnect the electronics to avoid huge damages, then evaluate what needed to be done. Since I hadn't gone too far, the wisest was to head back for a complete revision of the boat and set off again as soon as possible. Set off again, yes, but with the condition not to exceed the 10 days limit, after which the Spaniard wouldn't be allowed to cast off. Past the night for the ones at sea, we can tell things didn't drag on in the Bay of Biscay. Only favorites are found at the front. A trio of foilers composed of, in the right order, Armel Leclerc, Jean-Pierre Dic, and Alex Thompson, all in a three miles knot. We also note that second to last generation boats with straight keels haven't given in. One of them, PRB, was seen in the morning of November 7th off the coast of Acoruna. We get by. It's important not to be too far by Cape Finisterre. I think I did what was needed last night, but it took a lot of, out of me. And for good reasons. A very unstable northern wind and uncomfortable waters didn't spare bodies nor machines. Direct witness Morgan Lagravière while crossing Sébastien Jaws had the good idea to turn on his camera. We're off Cap Finisterre. And we have our friend Jojo who began to heap who's bearing off on Gitana. On cool. Having performed a great start of the race, Safran Skipper wasn't spared with troubles. We had problems with electronics, internet connection wouldn't function, and some trouble with a temperamental sail which is now nicely rolled up on its cable. Well, it's rather good news for the end of the day was finally able to nap shortly, eat a little, which had been a little complicated to do until now. That's it. While Kojiro Shiraishi is barely starting to get his sea legs. I've been seasick since the start, and it was difficult. Yesterday, I stopped vomiting, and today had my first meal. So I'm waiting to feel better, to be in harmony with the boat, and finish off this Vendée Globe nicely. 24 hours into the race, the leaders, Alex Thompson at their head, cross Cape Finisterre. The Hugo Boss skipper decides to jibe with the idea of best negotiating a high-pressure ridge up on the Gibraltar latitude. Models initially thought that was a good idea, but I'm not so sure it's a good idea anymore, but I'm not too far out of the game, so... Uh, if, uh, if it doesn't pay, then uh, for sure I'll still be in the hunt. We're trying to sneak south, trying to, trying to pass a ridge, or the ridge is going to move south with us before allowing us to pass it, and then we'll be into the trade winds and rocking south to the equator. Thompson to the east, not for very long, westwards all the others. Of course, the ridge slows down the head of the race, to the pursuer's benefit, who get to catch up and breathe a little. Such rainbows you don't see very often. And it's not a fake, it's for real. Isn't it great? So here, after muscular crossing of the Bay of Biscay, here's some little winds. We're very close by. You don't see him in the back, but Vincent Rieu is here. And Yann Elias isn't far. So definite contact in this beginning of the race. Seb Joss is right there. Morgan a little below. And Yann, who's crossing just behind. Jeremy's also 200 meters away. Hi, Jerem. The weak winds give a chance to all competitors to breathe and appreciate their sailing. Welcome on New Rest Matmut. We don't give away our music, we'll soon hoist the spinnaker and then all on the port tack towards the trade winds. Life is beautiful. Hi from onboard Initiative Coeur. We hoisted the Jenniker with the dolphins. We're off for the world around, yeah. Arnaud Boissier's world around is also made of strange encounters. 
Either you do the Vendée Globe the way we do, or play it Robinson Crusoe like. I don't know where he's going, but he's not quite there yet. I'm surprised to see you so close to Portugal. In any case, hope our encounter brings you luck, that you'll have wind, good winds, so not to get stuck. That's the worst, I think. Yeah, that's nice, very nice. It's good. See you around. Among the leaders, this start of the race is a little my turn, your turn. Six different boats have led the fleet since the start, but leaving the high, Banque Populaire leads with a step ahead. Armel Leclerc, a serene skipper, draws an evaluation of the first week. It's a start, but we're well off, beginning to take our marks on board. There hasn't been much damage on the boats behind, so that's good. But for us, all is smooth for now. So let's enjoy. Alex Thompson didn't make the most out of it. Quite some grounds lost in the 48 hours. At least the Hugo Boss skipper is clear-headed. Uh, clearly, the jibe I made off a of finish there was a huge mistake. And I've been beating myself up about it. Um, no real excuses. Shouldn't have made the mistake. And uh, I've paid for it dearly. But uh, being positive, working hard, and moving forwards, I hope. Another learning is that until now, the second to last generation boats with straight keels keep pace with the foilers, as shown by Vincent Rioux on PRB and Paul Meillat on SMA. Far, very far from the global regatta drawn by these boats, another race against the clock has already been won, won by Dida Costa. The Spaniard was able to repair his ballast, change his electric system on time. Now, as he crosses the start line for the second time of his world tour, more than 2,000 kilometers separate him from the head of the fleet. A head of fleet already heading to the next mark, a kind of border post between the globe's north and south, the equator. The first competitors should reach it at the beginning of next week. The race will then change its face. We're in the trade winds, it's warm, I'm wearing a t-shirt. Just hoisted the Jenniker to laugh a little, and we're crossing Madeira. I'll be able to sleep a little, wind is stabilizing. All right, bye now. <laughs> 